Uh, my name is uh, Tim Nurse and I'm uh, one of the owners here at Nurse Farms. Uh, we're at 41 River Road here in Waitley and uh, this is our 47th year in business. We started the farm in 1968. It was our first year we planted. Today we're, uh, we'll be looking through several uh, aspects of what we're doing here at Nurse Farms and we're starting here today in the shipping room where we are uh, preparing uh, because we produce strawberries and raspberries and we sell blueberries, rhubarb, asparagus as part of our catalog items that we sell. So uh, this is the fulfillment area where our, our, our packing crew uh, uh, packs orders and, and you can see they, they go on for the FedEx where the uh, FedEx truck comes daily to pick up the packages. Uh, on Monday we usually fill up, pretty much fill up a trailer load of, of packages. So here's an example of a packing list here for a customer. You can see with the barcoded here and so as a result they can go right up with it with there and they, can, they shoot it with a gun and that brings up the customer up here uh, and therefore the, the plants are put in the box and close the box, put on the scale, they hit the thing and it goes on the pallet and uh, those little, uh, we're now, we're shipping for Monday, we're preparing boxes to go out Monday right now because it's, we have a lot to do, we can't do them all one day so we're starting on Wednesday, Thursday, we start shipping for the following Monday. All these little boxes will be going to home gardeners and right now we're shipping into like Arkansas, North Carolina, the southern states uh, and but then then the 30, 65% uh, of the business goes to commercial growers and about 35% of the business is distributed to other wholesalers, other catalog companies who have, cat have strawberries and raspberries in there that they offer, but they buy them from us because they don't grow them themselves. We're now in the, in the plant pa packing, in the packing house, where we're actually preparing strawberry plants uh, for, for shipping. So all of the plants you see on the floor here have, were dug, were, we finished digging yesterday, so they were been dug here this spring already. And so they kind of shake out the soil so that, and then they, they fork the plants on the benches where the individual packers take and uh, sort the plants for, uh, to put the, for shipping. Here's a bundle of 25 plants. So you see how they're all uniformly graded. Uh, and all the all the broken plants or the or the uh, small plants are discarded in the waste. And um, there's a box, and there's 40 bundles in a box to make 1,000 plants in a box. Right now, we're packing between 230 and 280,000 plants a day. This will continue until about the middle of May when we'll be finishing up the packing and, uh, um, and then this crew will go outside and pick berries. So we've been doing this, we've been doing this strawberry packing since the, since the uh, 12th of November. So we packed all winter and because we, had, we, we, we dig in the, November, December and then we dig, dig again in the spring. So the next part on our tour, we'll, go, we'll be going into our greenhouse operation and uh, the, uh, the, with the greenhouse operation, all the plants that come out of the tissue culture lab uh, are, grow into the greenhouse to grow roots on them. So there's these little pieces of tissue like you'll, you'll we'll see in the lab, which we saw in the lab, they, and then we'll see them in the greenhouse, the different stages as they go. We have about three acres of, 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 of greenhouses. Uh, that that we use as part of our plant production uh, and the, 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 the facility pack produces about uh, a million, million two uh, plants a year. In this greenhouse we have seven different zones so for each zone to provide the ultimate conditions for those plants in that stage. So over here you can see th these are plants that have just just have come out of the lab. These were just planted. Uh, these were planted um, 
just uh, four days ago. And, and uh, they're still have, you know, let's see, they, they still have not started to root yet. Let me make sure I get those back. Um, but it takes, it, takes, it takes a few days for the initiation of the roots. Then this, the, this plant here was planted also on, on the 16th. And you can see how this little plant has already has gotten r roots. These are strawberry plants. That color light is the best color for growing strawberry and raspberry plants. These are the new, those new, that new technology on lights. That's what I see off the highway. Yes. It's like, it looks purple. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a place down on, down, uh, down the other side right of Waitley. Down south and yeah. kind of right. Yes. Yep. That's, yeah, that's, uh, that's full bloom farm. And, and they grow herbs and stuff. But the, we have, the, it's the same color. So obviously we, that's for the crops we grow. Yeah, yeah. Because you can change this from red to, to white color just just by just just by yeah. going to the computer as the humidity gets to a certain level the misters come on automatically we have bottom heat the bottom is, the heat is right here in the bottom so you have so you have the heat right where the roots where we want to grow the roots of the lights and then you see we have shade up there so we can with the shade we can control the heat in here so it's not too hot and dry and and then above the shade we have a uh, it's it's called a thermal curtain so coming in December uh, it's uh, start it's 20 it's 4 o'clock 20 degrees the, uh, the thermal shuts holds the heat in uh, into the greenhouse. So there's all these automated systems for making uh, labor savings and making these plants as happy as we can. Plant roots, uh, particularly strawberry and raspberries, they don't like it really hot and humid. They want a, a cooling, a more cool. So th th these are off of the bottom heat and that high humidity after they got rooted. Then in here they come in here to, to push them along to get to completing the growth cycle. So you see plants in here at all different levels. You also see one of our automatic waterers there, and that's also on the computer, and, and that machine goes along this track and, and to, to uh, help us uh, complete the watering. Because, because we have plants at different stages of growth in here, we still have to hand water so that we have the evenness of the watering, but this, with that, we can use that boom to get everything wet in a hurry or in a regular period of time without, uh, because if we can get over the ground faster than when hand waters. This is another growing zone that we're in. As you can tell, it's cool. Yeah. So these these plants now, these these these, these are all finished. So they are. You see, they've got a nice ball of roots, and these are ready to go to the field. They're almost ready to go to the field. But in here, it's cooled down. It's soft. It, the extended growth, the soft growth, is hardened so that when we get ready to plant in in in, in April, uh, these plants will be hardened off and ready to go into the field. Here we're in a different section of the house and you can tell by the temperature in here we are hardening all, everything off and this and because the, these plants are very close to being able to plant. So with these with these blackberries then the, the, there's a well well defined root plug so the the uh, uh, and we're just um, we're just um, finalizing the hours of chill and the hardening, and and this this bench of uh, plants is scheduled to uh, as soon as they have the, enough hardening off, they'll be shipped to California. So when we built this greenhouse, the uh, the, the conservation commission, because we're close to the ditch, uh, asked us what where all the water from the runoff would go from this greenhouse, because it, with a one-inch rain on a, on a, on an acre of ground is like 15,000 gallons. So as a way to accommodate the runoff from the greenhouse, we built this tank uh, that holds the the water from the runoff. And so uh, when, when 
when the tank is full after a rain, then we have we're not buying water from the town to to water the water the plants. So we're we're getting collecting the the runoff and and using it for our uh, using it for for the for the watering of the plants. So. This machine here takes and, and it, it fluffs up the soil and then it, it, it's like a sausage maker. And it, 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 pu it pushes the soil into this, into this fiber material and seals it. You can buy them like this, but it's cheaper to buy your own machine and, and make them. And so. So in a tissue culture lab, there, there are three sections, there are three parts to a lab uh, in a tissue culture lab. Right here, we're in the production area. In the production area, we, we mix the, the, the medium, and in the medium has all the growing requirements that plants need to grow, uh, plus uh, different, uh, uh, different hormones and so forth. These units here are autoclave units, and an autoclave unit sterilizes the containers uh, to reduce contamination of the cultures. Uh, the, the, the autoclave period is at uh, 250 degrees for 20 minutes. Is a, is a, it's kind of a light autoclave, but uh, it's, it, 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 it works in the process of removing uh, different agents that would cause uh, uh, in, um, contamination of the cultures. So this is the growth room, and as you see, this is a sizable space. And in, in the growth room, the, there's the lights to have 16-hour uh, days. Because strawberries and raspberries are all long-day plants, they they grow the best with on 16 hour days so there's light there's automatic lights that turn the lights on and shut the lights off so it's dark for eight hours but it's light for 16 hours this container here happens to be strawberry plants and the uh, you can see the clumps of plants in there where they have started to grow they grow into clumps and uh, um, and, and they would be also ready for transferring. Now, if you look in there, these were just transferred. Here, you see they're just starting to grow into the clumps, and and so the, this would these these would be these these would be transferred in in probably another two weeks. And, and one of the considerations with agriculture, we, we only produce about 10 or 15 percent of the people who who because uh, each one of us feeds 100 and 150 families each farm in the U.S. So the one percent of us are farmers. So <laughs> we so all the arts and science, pathology, entomology, plant breeding are all going to come from people who are interested in these as careers. But there's a lot of careers, and it's it's a uh, it's it's a uh, very challenging. Uh, it's very challenging, you know, types of uh, careers to be involved with. So.